Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about a post I did yesterday, both from LinkedIn and Instagram. It's about an MRCP with a lot of cities with challenging case. However, I just want to say thanks for those who noticed the post and for those who gave comments. It was very valuable comments. And today I want to share with you how we did it. So if you're interested, stick around. For those who knew, my name is back again. I'm an MRI radiographer in my channel. I'm covering things from basic to advanced MRI topics, tutorials just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. As we know that there are many ways to get to the same goal when it comes to MRI. And that's why I find it's very important to share the knowledge, share what you know, share with each other, discussion in the comments, like the post I did. I learned a lot. There are many, many ways. Nonetheless, I will show you what I did on this specific case, which was done before many, many years ago. Okay, the case goes like this. This was done on a point from 5 Tesla Siemens scanner. I was asking about, as you can see, there's a lot of CTs here. How would you manage to do the navigator or respiratory triggering when it comes to the MRCP, MRCP thin slabs of the bile duct system? We know that uh, there are always challenging when you have a CTs like this. So when should we put the navigator respiratory trigger? So how did we do this? For the navigator, we have two types of navigator when it comes to CMS. One is liver door. This is one like this. You've probably seen this before. You put half of the navigator in the liver and half of it in the, in the air lungs. So it would notice the difference between the air and the tissue. And remember to put it on two planes or else it won't work. And the second part is that the face scout. Some of you guys use the face scout, some use liver dome. I prefer the liver dome, but I will also show you what I did and how I, my strategy is, right? So in the face scout, you have two options. One is automatically, one is manual. If you choose manual, put it on the liver, try to avoid vessels, put it in two planes, okay? Even though you put the good navigator, it's very important that the patient is breathing consistently. This is important. The patient preparation is extremely important. So even though you can see the navigator is placed here perfectly, however, the patient is breathing irregularly, not a consistent pattern, you get images like this. This is a MIP of a thin slab, not good. So after talking to the patient, preparing the patient even more, you get a curve like this. So it's very consistent here, the breathing, and the image results is totally different. This is the same one, same patient. So this was just an example. So let's go further on here. The comments from my post was great. Thank you very much. A lot of people was mentioning maybe I see this drainage, the navigator on the kidney, why not? The bowel, the spleen, breath hole, that must be thin slice. It's also something you can do, but it's extremely challenging if the patient cannot hold the breath due to the conditions. Uh, tick slab is important to get an overview. And face scout, yeah, why not? So if you go here, how did we do it? So what did we do? We know that placing the navigator on the standard routine replacement is not a good goal. Because we can see here, this, uh, you have the half of the navigator on the liver, which is good, but half of it is on the fluid acetus, so it's not good. And if you look at the transversal plane, like this one, it's not good either, because if you go further up, you will meet the fluid acetus. So it's a no-go there. What about the spleen? Usually, when I'm going for a navigator, I'm going for the liver dome, and I'm going for the liver. If that doesn't work, I'm going for the spleen. That's the second choice. If that doesn't work, I go for the face scout. So this is how I work. However, on this page, we did a little bit different. So if you scroll up and down on images, you'll get images like this. So if you notice an area right here, like this one, there's no fluid right here, and you will at the same point right here. So we place the navigator like this. Sounds very crazy, right? But believe me, it did work. So i show you here. The respiratory... Um, the diagram is showing like this. So patients breathe perfectly. You get nice curves. And the image results was something like this. Not the best image, but nonetheless managed to solve the case. And this is most importantly, solving the case in a different situation. Think outside the box. So that's why I want to make this video, make the post, just to highlight this topic. It's a very important topic because Navigator, we have a lot of Navigator sequences in our liver protocol. Not only for MSP, some of you guys already do it for the diffusion and also for the T2 weighted, even if it's blade, propeller, multivane, whatever, is navigator triggered. 
So that's why it's very important to think outside the box, have a plan A, and then have also a plan B. This approach maybe not work on the next patient I have, so at least I try and I have a tool ready to know exactly where to place it. Well, that's it guys, I hope you find this video valuable. Nonetheless, this is just something we did, and the comments you already wrote is many, many good comments. If you want to follow this, just do it, or there are many comments, so please read the comments properly, and because there are many good ideas in there. Before we close up, I do have a question for you. Have you placed a navigator like this before? If so, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will get a ding ding whenever new videos for me are coming up. Until next time, take care and peace out.